Good afternoon. I'm Susan Collins, and as Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs, I am pleased to officially open this program. I invite you to join in the singing of the Star Spangled Banner, and those who are able, please stand for this portion of the ceremony. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch we're so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Virtual commencement celebrations for many of the university schools and colleges were held at the end of the winter term. The curriculum for some of them extend beyond that date, and it is the custom of these schools to convene their ceremonies at a later date. So today, it is a privilege to convene the graduation ceremony for the 170th class of the University of Michigan Medical School. It is now my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Mark Schlissel, president of the University of Michigan and the first physician scientist to lead our institution. On behalf of the entire University of Michigan community, congratulations to the University of Michigan School of Medicine's 2020 graduating class. You're heading off into what we now call the front lines, graduating under the most unusual and challenging of circumstances. But there's really never been a more important time to be a physician. Society needs you, bright, hardworking, idealistic, and energetic people who live to serve. Uh, I can tell you from my own experiences as a physician, uh, there won't be a single day that goes by in your career that you don't feel as if you're making a true difference for others. Your life will have tremendous meaning personally and be of tremendous value to others. Uh, good luck with all of your future endeavors and always go blue. I'd like to now turn things over to Regent Shauna Ryder Diggs, an alumna of this fantastic medical school. Regent Diggs. Thank you, President Schlissel. On behalf of my colleagues at the Board of Regents, I am honored to share the significant milestone with you today. Congratulations to you and your families. While this may not be how you envisioned ending your medical school journey, we are here nonetheless to celebrate all of your accomplishments your determination, sacrifice, and commitment to protecting and improving the health and well-being of others has become even more crucial as the world fights a global pandemic. Although the practice of medicine is ever-changing and we are making inroads in understanding and treating diseases, being expert diagnosticians remains important. We as physicians must also continue to cultivate empathy and compassion so that we may provide the highest quality care. I am certain that your faculty members have spent the past few years instilling this in you, and I trust that you will reflect upon and recall their insights as you pursue your careers. As a physician myself and a graduate of the University of Michigan Medical School and residency programs, I see the influence that a Michigan education and medical training has on people of all backgrounds. We learn to think, speak, and work across boundaries. Some of you will jump right into your residency programs at a time when the world needs you the most. Know that your journey at U of M has prepared you to navigate the challenges and leverage the opportunity to implement your skills to save lives all across the world. As you enter this next stage of life, I encourage you to stand strong in the face of hardships and continue to break down medical barriers. For today, you are no longer medical students. 
You are doctors with incredibly challenging and fulfilling futures ahead of you. You are the world's heroes, and we are extremely proud of you, and we wish you the very best. Congratulations, Class of 2020. Good luck, and forever go blue. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Marshall Rungi, the Executive Vice President for Medical Affairs, Dean of the Medical School, and Chief Executive Officer of Michigan Medicine. Dr. Rungi will introduce our honored guest in attendance today. Thank you, Shauna, and welcome. Today is your commencement ceremony, the class of 2020. I'd like to introduce a few of our leaders who are integral to our program today. Our honored speaker, Dr. Regina Benjamin, President Dr. Mark Schlissel, Provost Dr. Susan Collins, Regent Dr. Shauna Diggs, Executive Vice Dean for Academic Affairs, Dr. Carol Bradford, Senior Associate Dean for Education and Global Initiatives, Dr. Joseph Kolars, Senior Award Recipient, Dr. William Peterson, and class speaker, Josh Kurtz. Let me also acknowledge all of you, all the families, the spouses, the significant others and friends who have provided their support, your compassion, your understanding, and yes, as hard as it may be for some to admit, even your advice have sustained this class and all of us. Now to our 2020 medical school graduates. Today, you officially enter the profession of medicine and the family of Michigan alumni. This is one of those great days you'll always remember for the rest of your lives. It's also one of the most unusual graduations we've ever had or I think you will ever have. This is the first ever virtual graduation of the medical school at the University of Michigan and let's hope it's the last. No doubt you'll have many lifelong memories from your time at the University of Michigan Medical School. And some of you also started memories with lifelong partners. Nine students got married during their time here, and two of these married to each other. And three babies were born to our 2020 graduates. When you all started this journey four years ago, or longer for some of you, it probably felt like graduation was a lifetime away. But today, you begin the next phase of your career. As much as you've learned in the past four years during your residencies, you will learn more, much, much more. You will gain a new appreciation for what it really means to be the decision maker in precarious clinical situations. And perhaps most important of all, you'll learn how important your relationship is with your patients. In these past couple of months of the pandemic, we've witnessed just how critical healthcare leaders are in times of crisis and times of hardship. Physicians and other healthcare providers offer their patients so much more than just treatment. Physicians offer compassion, advice, trust, a reassuring word or smile, and hope that things will be all right. Some also became like family, as isolation restricted interactions with loved ones. The future of healthcare is undeniably changed by the COVID-19 pandemic, and your future will also be shaped by its effects. You're entering a residency at a time when paradigms will change, new innovations will be needed, and forward thinking will be a game changer. Indeed, this pandemic has shown us our vulnerabilities and our strengths as patients, healthcare providers, and as people. I hope your final few months at Michigan and this unprecedented commencement will remind you that life is precious and should be cherished, not only in your work, but in your personal lives as well. Acknowledging that every day you move forward in your career, balancing your work and your life, not only makes you a better physician, but also a better person. But I know, as you move to the next phase in your career, you'll not be on your own. Even more so than today, innovation in healthcare will bring others from many different disciplines to your daily work including nurses, pharmacists, physical therapists, but also engineers, social workers, policymakers, data analysts, just to name a few. In your residency, I encourage you to embrace broad ideas and viewpoints of others who have different skills. They will only complement your expertise and together you'll provide even better, even more compassionate care for your patients. Let me close by saying what has been true is true for all of us and is particularly true for those 
you admire most in medicine. Medicine is rewarding. Medicine is challenging. But when you keep the health of your patients and of yourselves first, there will be far more joy than there is heartache. Now I'd like to introduce Dr. Carol Bradford, Executive Vice Dean for Academic Affairs and Chief Academic Officer for Michigan Medicine. Again, congratulations. Hello, and congratulations to our class of 2020. Before we proceed, I would like to extend a special welcome and thank you to all of our scholarship donors who are joining us virtually today. We are so grateful for your generous support, which has helped make this day possible for so many of our graduates. Thank you for your commitment to medical education and investment in the future of medicine. To our graduates, this is the day many of you have dreamed of ever since you were young. This is the day many of you pointed to when you made a decision in high school or college or after to pursue a career in medicine. This is the day all of you have worked tirelessly for since you came to the University of Michigan Medical School. This is the day that marks the beginning of the next step in your journey to become a leader and, and change agent in transforming health and healthcare. This is the day we honor you. Most importantly, this is the day we call you doctor. When you crossed the stage at Hill Auditorium to receive your ceremonial white coat four or more years ago, I am sure that many of you envisioned the day you would return there with your classmates to receive your medical school diploma. The COVID-19 pandemic will keep us apart today physically, but our student leaders were steadfast in our belief that we should gather virtually to celebrate all that you have achieved during your time here. In many respects, the current health crisis has shined a spotlight on you, a class that has proven over and over again that it is flexible, adaptive, and strong. You came to Michigan as the first class to be fully immersed in our new medical student curriculum. You have been trailblazers for all the classes that have and will follow. You are proof that Michigan was up to the challenge of changing medical education again. You learned to practice medicine during a time when your new profession has changed dramatically. How we treat our patients and families will never again be the same. Now you leave as proud graduates, confident in your role as change agents and leaders in healthcare. Although your final year has not ended as you may have hoped, it has provided you with a grand stage to show that the future of healthcare is in the very best of hands. Our community has marveled at your acts of kindness and unselfishness, born of a desire to impact the health event of our lifetimes. You did not sit by idly as your final year of medical school changed. Instead, you stepped up and made Michigan medicine stronger. We have all been changed by the COVID-19 pandemic and I have no doubt that this experience has changed you as human beings first and as doctors second. Now you are Michigan doctors. In closing, I would like to share some beautiful remarks from my colleague and friend, Dr. Linda Selwa, a professor of neurology in the medical school who many of you know well. This is for a moment. It is a momentous day. Your roads have brought you together here with warm memories of the past and solemn views into the future. For just a moment, reflect with pride on the hours of epiphanies and the hours of toil that landscaped your path. For a moment, reflect with gratitude for all the people who helped you, who showed you boulders and flowers that marked your way. For a moment, reflect with peace 
on all that you have achieved and the road that has emerged out of the fog into the future. We wish you many gifts for your life as physicians. For moments when you need it, we wish you patience with the complexity of providing care and the critical task of listening hard. For moments when you need it, we wish you understanding of the many views and personalities of those you care for so you can see their needs clearly. For every moment of your professional life, we wish you compassion and empathy for each person who comes your way, needing a light into their best life and perhaps their best death. And we wish you the gift of saying, staying true to your own best self. In the moments to come, remember to make sure you care for yourself as much as you would care for others. In moments to come, remember that you have stopped climbing ladders and must let your own core values guide you in choosing your life. In moments to come, remember that those who are dear to you depend on nothing less than the very best you have to give. And remember that you will be strengthened by all the love your closest supporters have to give from all of us who can join you here and from many others who share your burdens and your dreams. In this moment, see yourselves moving on with purpose to live your calling, to earn the joy of knowing you will bring understanding, hope, and life to so many fellow human souls. Congratulations. It is now my pleasure to introduce Josh Kurtz, who has been selected by his peers to speak on behalf of the senior class. Josh has an incredible background. He is originally from Traverse City, Michigan, and graduated from the University of Michigan in 2014 with a degree in biochemistry. Following graduation, he stayed in the Ann Arbor area to teach undergraduate students in the basic sciences and act as a standardized patient at the medical school prior to matriculating in 2016. While in medical school, he furthered his passion for education by researching students' perception of assessment, as well as serving as one of his class curriculum representatives and co-chair of the Learning Environment Task Force. He also volunteered in the University of Michigan Medical School student-run free clinic, where he worked with uninsured patients to acquire medical coverage for their care. He has been inducted into the Alpha Omega Alpha and Gold Humanism Medical Honor Societies and selected by his classmates to receive the Paul DeWolf Award. More importantly, Josh would like to remind everyone of the plethora of failures he has had as a medical student. He has excelled in re receiving countless rejections from academic journals, and once in the operating room, when asked if he could drive the camera, he asked, what are we filming? He wasn't joking. He recently spent four hours trying to find his social security card, which he ultimately found in a highly secure place, his sock drawer. Josh will begin his residency in pediatrics this summer at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Please join me in welcoming Josh Kurtz, the 2020 class speaker, as he gives his address entitled, The Very Normal Graduation Speech You Deserve. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the graduating class of 2020, I would like to express our collective gratitude to all of those virtually gathered here today. Family, friends, partners, faculty, staff, coworkers, and so many others, thank you. We love and appreciate you and truly could not have done this without your support. I would also like to thank my classmates for allowing me to speak on their behalf. You are encouraging, kind, and inspiring. I am so deeply honored to address such an outstanding group of, dare I say it, doctors. I would like to very briefly acknowledge the virtual infectious elephant in the room. 
COVID-19. COVID, I would like to first remind you that you aren't even technically considered a living thing. In fact, E. coli, a bacteria which spends most of its time hanging around feces in our intestinal tracts, is technically considered more alive than you. While I often use humor to cope during difficult times, I would like to take a brief moment to acknowledge what we have lost during this pandemic. Celebrations, connections, and most importantly, the lives of our loved ones. I thought a lot about how to frame the speech in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. I considered doing some special format or reflection on how it has transformed our lives in unexpected ways. But after much reflection, what I feel we are most missing right now and what we deeply need and deserve is some freaking normalcy. So, having very briefly acknowledged COVID, let's move on to the very normal graduation speech you deserve. With all its overdone verbiage, lighthearted yet respectful jokes, and highly insightful interwoven message. There are two ways to frame every story, positively or negatively. Keeping true to past medical school graduation narratives, which honestly often more closely resemble roasts than public addresses, I would like to first recount the story of our medical school journey from a rather, let's call it, angsty perspective. Class of 2020, we are special. Many of us are among the first to experience the new curriculum in its entirety. And for dual degree and MD PhD students, truly bless you for having navigated your respective hodgepodge mashup curricula. Do you remember on interview day, how we were entranced by diagram after diagram of trees? We nodded our heads as we heard trunk, branches, twigs, acorn, chlorophyll. Buzzword after buzzword washed over us. Early clinical exposure, change agents, vertical integration, M-home, and most importantly, yoga. Little did we know that we, as little baby acorns, were about to embark on a period of rapid growth to blossom into fully grown, mildly deformed, yet technically competent trees. As we started medical school, we entered the trunk. The trunk of the tree acts as its foundation, and we would soon learn that our foundation was flawless. For example, with our preclinical training having been condensed by six months, we spent a very reasonable 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. in lectures Monday through Friday. This very feasible schedule left plenty of time between the hours of 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. to spend the recommended two hours per lecture to review and master the material, which left a downright excessive one hour per night for sleep. We took a similarly reasonable 40 quizzes and exams, including some of which had more answer choices than there are letters in the alphabet. Thanks, Dr. Gelb. Having successfully grown our trunk, we started to develop the next part of our tree, our second trunk. Excited and nervous, we stepped onto the wards with newly purchased goodies flowing out of our white coat pockets which certainly made us appear like the senior clinicians we intended, and not the terrified and competent baby twiglets that we were. As clinical trunk students, we had the opportunity to wake up at the regular human hour of 4 a.m. to carry the MRSA bucket, I, um, I mean the, the wound care bucket, between patient rooms. To round out our second trunk, we answered 2,000 multiple choice questions, read an entire textbook in straight up bullet point format, and watched hundreds and hundreds of videos, all in the short time course of eight weeks. After we emerged from our second trunk, we finally reached the promised land of the new curriculum, the branches. We spent months forexing our way through online electives from the comforts of our homes. We fretted over personal statements, which we would soon learn would be briefly scanned or realistically entirely ignored by program directors, and now, we are here. We leave medical school as fully grown, double-trunked trees, fully prepared to care for patients, just so long as they conveniently provide us with five multiple choice options to choose from. So, now for that highly insightful message, as promised. Throughout our medical training, we are constantly exposed to negativity. It's pervasive in the language we use to describe patients and their families, as we get slammed by due admissions, and further slowed down by poor historians. And indeed, we leave our medical school training less empathetic and more burned out than when we started. 
So, my fellow shrubs and scrubs, toward reversing this negativity, let's reframe the story we just heard, shall we? As we began medical school and started to grow our first trunk, we absolutely crushed it. Many of us were amongst the first to experience a brand new curriculum at Michigan, and we took on hours and hours of lecture and quizzes every single week. Simultaneously, we started to lay our foundation as leaders and change agents. We provided free, high-quality health care to those without insurance, the homeless, and those seeking asylum. We started companies and generated new knowledge. We raised families. And we tore off layer after layer of clothing at student-generated dance shows and musicals. And to round the year out, we went on an epic bar crawl with a medical pun-themed shirt to go along with it. Having laid an important foundation, we entered the clinical trunk and fearlessly awoke at 4 a.m. to serve our patients. We recognize that even though our role as medical students may not always be the most meaningful, spending extra time with our patients help them to feel human and grounded amidst periods of chaos. We culminated our first year of clinical immersion by grinding through thousands of practice questions, learning through dynamic videos, all while successfully supporting each other along the way. Having solidified our clinical skills, we emerged as branches students. We served patients globally through patient care and research, we took time for ourselves to recharge while learning high-yield clinical topics from home. We acted as sub-interns and actually answered a couple of real pages all on our own and gained increasing autonomy and responsibility in the process. And we prepared applications for residency while continuing to take standardized examinations and again navigating so many other personal challenges along the way. We, my dear friends, are resilient, dedicated, and all around Incredible. Over the next few years, we will be reminded over and over about how burned out and overworked we are. And yes, there are many very real cultural and institutional level factors that contribute to this reality for clinicians. Regardless, during our residency training and throughout our careers, we, class of 2020, will have an important choice to make every single day. Will we succumb to this expectation of negativity and maintain the status quo? Or can we instead flip the script and leverage what we have learned to make positive change? Having had the privilege of getting to know all of you over the past four years, I am deeply confident in our answers. Thank you all for being here today and a much deserved congratulations to the outstanding class of 2020 on your successful growth from little baby acorns to strong, kind, and inspiring trees. Thank you, Josh, for your wonderful address. It is now my pleasure to announce that the class of 2020 has selected Dr. William Peterson, a clinical lecturer in the Department of Emergency Medicine, who also serves as the Assistant Clerkship Director and a Medical Education Fellow as the recipient of the Senior Award. The Senior Award goes to a member of the faculty of the medical school who, in the view of the graduating class, best exemplifies the ideals of the teacher-clinician. This award consists of a cer certificate signed by the President of the Student Council and the addition of their name to the Senior Award plaque, along with all of the names of past year's recipients. The plaque hangs in the Office of Medical Student Education. Congratulations, Dr. Peterson, on receiving this tremendous honor. We invite you to share a few words of inspiration with the class. Graduates, first, I wanna thank you for the honor of standing before you or rather, to be virtually presenting myself in front of you on this special day in such unique circumstances. I was actually hoping for a green screen behind me and to present myself from the Hogwarts Great Hall, or maybe I'd be caught mid-central line placement on the International Space Station, but I'll settle for a 4K rendering of my face with filters applied, of course, if that's the best we can do. For those who don't know me, I'm junior faculty in the emergency department. 
I encounter many of you rotating through on your required emergency medicine clerkships. A select few backpacking and caving during wilderness medicine, but the vast majority of our shared experience is through the residency preparatory courses. I want to emphasize what a joy it is to interact with you all at the end of your medical school training as you hone your skills and focus in on what is most relevant to you to your future specialty training. You are tremendously talented and gifted, and it is a true privilege to speak to you today. As an educator, I'm compelled to outline my short speech for you with learning objectives to maximize your attention and takeaways. So here they are. One, to congratulate you on your tremendous success and future potential. We did that one kind of, and we'll circle back to that on the final slide. Two, to mention the pandemic and briefly what that means. Three, to highlight the importance of education in your future careers. And four, to close the loop and summarize. Moving to point two, the pandemic. We are, quite obviously, living through unique times. I imagine many will speak to this today, but I thought I'd offer a few words as an educator and as someone who's seeing and taking care of these patients in the emergency department. When we take our Hippocratic Oath, as you all will today, we do not routinely anticipate the risk we take on as providers in fulfilling our oaths. As medical educators, we can do our best to teach to a pandemic and to what we know or think we know about the disease process. There's no boot camp, however, that can teach the daily struggle it is to maintain focus, to wear the appropriate protective equipment for every patient encounter, or to stay as clean and unexposed as possible in a hospital and community where the disease is rampant. There is no preparation for the emotional toll it takes to treat patients in a safe way for the patient and our own team, to deny access to family members, to adjust our plans and approach as information changes, and to stay emotionally unattached ourselves to focus first on patient care. It is a separate challenge then to allow yourself to feel emotion and to try and process what's appropriate and why you might be angry or sad or frustrated or not feel anything at all. What we do know and what we can teach is that there's resilience where there's hope and there's hope where there are bright and eager minds ready to take on these challenges and that's you. We can teach the tools and skills necessary to make and test hypotheses to manage teams, to treat patients with our available resources, and to communicate with our coworkers, our patients, and their families. Medical school training provides the tools to approach a problem, and you all are sitting there now with the tools ready to succeed. This brings me to my third point, the importance of education. As you graduate today and add the MD to your name, there's something unique that happens beyond elevating from the bottom of the medical hierarchy. Your words carry weight and your actions matter. While this is always true, this is particularly magnified with your graduate degree, and even more so in the setting of the pandemic. You have the attention of the world. What you decide to do with that is up to you. I urge you to apply yourself to your patients with dedication and vigilance. I urge you to take care of yourselves, your family, and your friends with compassion and gratitude. And I urge you to consider how you can give back what you have learned to educate your future medical students your peers, your attendings, your patients. The ability to educate, to transfer knowledge, to share experiences, to connect with others is the most powerful tool we have. Some years ago now, I sat where you are. Well, actually, it was a packed auditorium back when we were allowed those things, when I graduated medical school from the University of Michigan. I recall the respect and admiration I had for my classmates as we received our diplomas and took our oaths and I'm newly optimistic for all of our futures as I think of your class and the respect and admiration I have for each of you. And with this, we close the loop. As you ready yourselves to take on residency in the midst of a pandemic, know that you have the tools to succeed. Apply yourself with vigilance, with care, with compassion, with regard for your team and your patients, and consider how you can take what you've learned to educate others so we can all succeed together. Thank you and go blue. Thank you, Dr. Peterson, for your heartfelt words for our graduates. It is now my sincere pleasure to introduce this year's commencement speaker, Dr. Regina Benjamin. Dr. Benjamin served as the 18th United States Surgeon General from the years 2009 through 2013. As America's doctor, she provided the public with the best scientific information available on how to improve their health and the health of a nation. 
She also oversaw the operational command of 6,500 uniformed public health officers who serve in locations around the world to promote and protect the health of the, Amer of the American people. Founder and CEO of Bayo Clinic Incorporated and the Gulf States Health Policy Center, she specializes in prevention policies and health promotion among individuals as well as large populations, especially concerning obesity, childhood obesity, and children's health. She has a special interest in rural health care, health disparities among socioeconomic groups, suicide, violence, and mental health. In 1995, she was the first physician under the age of 40 and the first African-American woman to be elected to the American Medical Association Board of Trustees. She is a member of the Institute of Medicine and fellow of the American Academy of Family Physicians. In 1998, she was the United States recipient of the Nelson Mandela Award for Health and Human Rights. She received the 2000 National Caring Award, which was inspired by Mother Teresa and was recognized with a papal honor given by Pope Benedict XVI. In 2008, she was honored with a MacArthur Genius Award Fellowship. Dr. Benjamin earned a Bachelor's in Science in Chemistry from Xavier University, New Orleans, and earned her MD from the University of Alabama at Birmingham, and an MBA from Tulane University. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Benjamin. Hello, while I'm speaking to you by video, Please know that my heart is there with each of you in person. To the president, the dean, trustees, faculty, parents, family, and friends, but especially to the class of 2020, congratulations on this great accomplishment. I am truly honored that you have allowed me to be a part of your very special day. Today, you are joining less than 7% of the world's population that have a college degree an even smaller percentage with an advanced degree, an especially small but elite group of those with a medical degree. But leave it to this class, 39 of you are receiving both a medical degree and an advanced degree at the same time. You're getting that degree from a preeminent, internationally recognized academic medical center of the highest quality with excellence in patient care research, and education. A school that prides itself on its values and the school's long commitment to inclusion and diversity. A school that is at the forefront of innovation in medical education. And each of you exemplifies those values and that innovation. Let me start by sharing with you a few of my personal experiences and hopefully stimulate your thoughts on how you can make a difference. When I was an intern, I attended the Medical Association of Georgia's annual meeting, and one of the intense issues that was being debated was that sexually transmitted diseases needed to be taught in medical school. I stood up in a room with maybe 10, 15 people, and I told them I had never seen certain diseases except in a textbook, and I thought there was a need for the resolution. The resolution passed and the Georgia delegation forwarded that resolution to the American Medical Association. They also took me to the May AMA to speak to the resolution, and it passed. And within six months, every medical school in this country was encouraged to include sexually transmitted diseases as part of their core curriculum. I learned that one person can make a difference, whether it's in medical policy or in medical practice. And I learned that I could make a difference in medical practice when a National Health Service Corps sent me to Biola Battery, Alabama. It's a pretty place, but it's a poor place. I found a community of working poor. Too poor to afford medical care, but too rich to qualify for Medicaid. I liked the people, I liked the community, and I wanted to practice medicine there. But I quickly learned that practicing medicine wasn't just sewing up the shark bites. I had to deal with the land sharks the regulators, the reviewers, the red tape dispensers. I learned that my patients had problems 
that my prescription pad alone could not solve. Things like literacy, adequate housing, especially after Katrina, employment opportunities, transportation. So I decided to stay involved in every organization I could, from the AMA to the county and state medical societies, United Way, Red Cross, Girl Scouts, Chamber of Commerce, any organization to help get resources to my community. So when President Obama asked me to become Surgeon General, it was with mixed feelings that I agreed to leave my patients of 23 years. However, I realized that I would now have 300 million Americans as my new patients. Prevention is the foundation of our nation's public health system, and prevention is the foundation of my work as Surgeon General and as a family physician. Health does not occur in the doctor's office and the hospitals only. Health also occurs where we live, where we learn, where we work, where we play, where we pray. Health is in everything that we do. I believe prevention is the key to building a stronger and more sustainable healthcare system. We have to make prevention part of our everyday lives and empower people to make better health choices. As Surgeon General, I had the privilege to release the first ever national prevention strategy, America's plan for health and wellness. Our vision is to move our healthcare system from a focus on sickness and disease to a focus on wellness and prevention. I hope that each and every one of you will play a major role in making that happen. It is often said, you make a living by what you get, but you make a life by what you give. It's so important that you become an active member of your community that you actually have an impact on healthcare, on the community, and on the world. As students, many of you have already completed a path of excellence, and even more of you completed the AMA's Capstone for Impact project. These programs have prepared you well to go out and serve your communities. But now you're gonna go out as physicians. And as physicians, People will trust and respect you because you are a physician. You will be looked up to as a leader and as a leader in your hospitals, in your community, by your families, by your little brothers and sisters, your cousins, and by your neighbors. But as physicians, we are truly, truly blessed. And there's no other profession like it. There is nothing like the look on a mother's face when you tell her her baby is gonna be okay, whether she, her baby is three or 33, that look on that mother's face is the same. Our patients trust us. They truly trust us. A young woman who's being physically abused will tell you, her doctor, her deepest, darkest secrets before she tells her priest her minister or her rabbi, because she trusts you. A mother will put her baby in the hands of a stranger she's never met because she trusts you, because you are a physician. And your hands are often the first hands that a baby will feel when it enters this world. And your hands may very well be the last hands that an elderly person feels when they leave this earth. We are truly a blessed profession, but with those blessings comes responsibility, which leads me to leadership and what I like to call leadership from behind. As you rise to a level of success, don't forget to reach back and pull others up with you. That's the sign of a good leader. But a great leader won't stop there. They will push them out in front and make them even better than they are. And they will let you know that they have your back. That's a great leader. Your professors and your faculty here will always have your back. 15, 20 years from now, you can call on them and they'll be there for you. Don't forget what makes a great leader. Today is certainly your big day, but you never know who's watching. 
I used to get my name in the papers all the time and and I would the media would call and ask you for the same interview over and over and I would not I would not want to be bothered until one day I got in the mail a manila envelope filled with letters from a second grade class and each of those letters said I saw your picture in the paper I want to be a doctor just like you and I realized that the my picture being in that paper wasn't about me your graduating today isn't just about you. It's also about that little kid who sees your picture and says, I can be just like you. Take time for yourselves. Be a doctor first and be a good doctor. But take time for yourself to play, to enjoy, rest, exercise, do all the things you tell your patients to do, have fun. This is your graduation weekend. Have fun. Keep the friends and the relationships that you have built here close to you because it gets lonelier and lonelier the more successful you get. And you will need those friendships to call on. And those friends will be there for you. Finally, at the request of one of your classmates, I want to end with a poem. And it's by an unknown author. And it's entitled... God minute. And it goes like this. I have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it, forced upon me, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it, give account if I abuse it, just a tiny little minute, yet eternity is in it. I hope that each of you will take your God minute and make a difference. Congratulations, class of 2020. Welcome to the profession of medicine. Thank you for your inspirational address, Dr. Benjamin. Now it's time to present the award recipients for the class of 2020. I would now like to introduce Dr. Joseph Kolars, Senior Associate Dean for Education and Global Initiatives, who will present the awards. The achievement of excellence is the individual obligation of every student and practitioner of medicine. To those who have in their careers evidence particular dedication to fulfilling this responsibility, recognition is given through the awards which I now have the pleasure of presenting. At this time, I would like to direct your attention to the commencement program. Over the course of the past semester, we have had the opportunity to recognize achievement through many mediums. To all students who have been presented with awards, we honor your successes in this moment. Congratulations to each of you. The Dean's Award for Research Excellence goes to Charles Huang and Heather Schofield. The Puneet Ashu Alawadi Memorial Award goes to Stephen John. The Paul DeWolf Award goes to Josh Kurtz. The Ralph M. Gibson Award goes to Christian Black and Caitlin Helm. The Patrick John Nyland Award goes to Jack Buchanan. The Sujal Parikh Award goes to Anita Vasudevan. The Dr. Jane Skillen Memorial Award goes to Brittany Irvin Sekunze. The Andrew J. Zweifler Award for Excellence in Clinical Skills goes to Josh Kurtz. The Leonard Tao Humanism Award presented by the Arnold P. Gold Foundation goes to Katherine Holt. The Academic Achievement Award goes to Michael Klee. The Academic Recognition Awards goes to Michael Klee, Joshua Rainey, Hannah Saltzman, June Tomei, and Paige Van Aken. The Glasgow Rubin Citations for Academic Achievement from AMWA goes to Christina Cisse, Stephanie Chen, Lauren Chibukos, Nadine Ibrahim, Alisa Kleinhans, Laura Kruger, Kyle McLean, Hannah Saltzman, 
June Tomei, and Paige Van Aken. The United States Public Health Service 2020 Excellence in Public Health Award goes to Marina Huck. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of the University of Michigan Medical School, the regents of the university confer the degree Doctor of Medicine upon those so recommended. I now have the privilege of conferring to you the diploma certifying the degree Doctor of Medicine. I would like to now ask Dr. Rajesh Mangukar, Associate Dean for Medical Student Education, to come forward and present this year's graduating seniors. Dean Rungi, it is my honor to present to you the University of Michigan Medical School's 170th class, the class of 2020. Dr. Jacob J. Abuhana. Dr. Caroline Elizabeth Adams. Dr. Raina Advani. Dr. Rizwan Ahmed. Dr. Miranda C. Ajulafa. Dr. Mitchell Alamadeen. Dr. Rohit Anand. Dr. Tala Anwar. Dr. Noni Shupangi Arora. Dr. Catherine E. Asta. Dr. Marwa Kamil Ayash. Dr. Timothy Nenpan Berg. Dr. Angela M. Bailey. Dr. Rose A. Bamfo. Dr. Jordan Lee Batchelor. Dr. Fadal Abbas Bazi. Dr. Anna Nicole Berezovsky. Dr. Tova Berg. Dr. David Best. Dr. Christian Black. Dr. Catherine Staley Brown. Dr. Jack Hale Buchanan. Dr. Matthew Richard Carey. Dr. Paris R. Castaneda. Dr. Christina Louise Cisai. Dr. Brian Chang. Dr. Samantha Catherine Chow.
Dr. Stephanie G. Chen. Dr. Singh D. Chen. Dr. Lauren Nicole Chabukos. Dr. Alexander Jinsung Choi. Dr. Ravi Chopra. Dr. Jake Claflin. Dr. Brian Patrick Cleary. Dr. Charmaine G. Cooley. Dr. Rishi Das. Dr. Ayana Gloria Robinson de Gaia. Dr. Alirio Jose Correa de Morales. Dr. Danielle Kelly Devlin. Dr. Apurv Deer. Dr. Sarah Melissa Diamond. Dr. Brendan Robert Dillon. Dr. Laura Marie Donahue. Dr. Brittany Ariel Irvin Siconze. Dr. Nicolas Manuel Espinosa. Dr. Maureen Fasson. Dr. Dima A. Fawaz. Dr. Brent T. Folsom. Dr. Zachary Fox. Dr. Zachary Paul French. Dr. Witt Freilich. Dr. Keith Matthew Garber. Dr. David Allen Giles. Dr. Rachel Anna Joshua Ryan. Dr. David Arrow Goldfarb. Dr. Lavana Vanye Green Higgs. Dr. Marissa Zichi Guo. Dr. Sonali Gupta. Dr. Marina Huck. Dr. Emily Corinne Parker. Dr. Spencer Eldon Hart.
Dr. Catherine Marie Heckman. Dr. Caitlin Elizabeth Helm. Dr. Michael Raphael Hip. Dr. Lindsay Shea Holland. Dr. Charles Lee Holliday. Dr. Catherine Holt. Dr. Zachary Michael Hoodinger. Dr. Charles Huang. Dr. Nadine Ismail Ibrahim. Dr. Vina Janardan. Dr. Stephen Chirmakatu John. Dr. Ann Helen Kalinowski. Dr. Charles Stephen Katzman. Dr. Courtney Elizabeth Kine. Dr. Jesse Keith Kelly. Dr. Alexander Charles Kelso. Dr. Jason Lloyd Kessler. Dr. Alexander Nayef Khoury. Dr. Jenny Kim. Dr. Michael Joseph Kirsch II. Dr. Seth Adam Clapman. Dr. Edwin Joseph Klein. Dr. Alyssa Lillian Wall Kleinhetz. Dr. Kazimer Christian Klim. Dr. Michael Patrick Klee. Dr. Alex Novak Kokoli. Dr. Kristen Laura Kohlberg. Dr. Kate Andra Collars. Dr. Elizabeth Sarah Kopp. Dr. Andrew Gregory Kosminski. Dr. Laura Grace Kruger. Dr. Josh Kurtz. Dr. Young Han Kwan. Dr. Patrina LaFair.
Dr. Sylvia Shioshi Lee. Dr. Michael Aaron Lori. Dr. Kevin L. Liu. Dr. Arusa Mushtaq Malik. Dr. Abhishek Manjunathan. Dr. Brianna Lynn Marukas. Dr. Kyle Catherine McLean. Dr. Megan Rose McLeod. Dr. Matthew Tate McMillan. Dr. Jonathan B. Melendez Torres. Dr. Alexandra Mendoza. Dr. Anita Menon. Dr. Evan S. Merriman. Dr. Alex Kane Miller. Dr. Sean Ryan Miller. Dr. Anisha Merchandani. Dr. James M. Mosner. Dr. Daniel Alexander Nadelman. Dr. Harnek Singh Neelam. Dr. Juan Paulo Noda. Dr. Carol Marie Norona. Dr. Taylor Shea Novis. Dr. Laura Sarver O'Donoghue. Dr. Mikhail Ognanovsky. Dr. Benjamin Palmer Audi. Dr. Luke Allen Overholt. Dr. Warren Wong Pan. Dr. Allen Paniagua Cruz. Dr. Nish Patel. Dr. Caitlin J. Patterson. Dr. Nolan Reed Pearson. Dr. Joel Allen Poliski. Dr. Victoria M. Prince. Dr. Joshua Paul Rainey.
Dr. Nicholas Salim Raja. Dr. Adam Rene Perez Rosenbaum. Dr. Megan Elizabeth Rowe. Dr. Brian Lewis Ruggiero. Dr. Mason Rungi. Dr. William Wakefield Russell. Dr. Zachary M. Sala. Dr. Mariam Namir Salman. Dr. Hannah Marie Lee Saltzman. Dr. Megan Elizabeth Schechtman. Dr. Heather Schofield. Dr. Ari D. Schumann. Dr. Catherine Elizabeth Selwa. Dr. Christopher Andrew Sessi. Dr. Claire Shea. Dr. Dylan A. Shiro. Dr. Sarah Melissa Smith. Dr. Maxwell Thomas Spadafore. Dr. Brooke Marie Spensley. Dr. Erica Christine Steensma. Dr. Mary Oakley Strasser. Dr. Cameron Reed Thompson Strong. Dr. Tara Gundapa Sula. Dr. Fitz G. Tavernier. Junior. Dr. Rebecca Lynn Toback. Dr. June Tome. Dr. Daniel Augustus Triner. Dr. Nishma G. Valikodat. Dr. Elizabeth Florence Van Weeren. Dr. Anita Vasudeva. Dr. Nathan Joseph Vengalil. Dr. Jacqueline Elizabeth Vidosh. Dr. Paige Elizabeth Vanakan. Dr. Kevin Michael Wheelock.
Dr. Emma Elizabeth Williams. Dr. Jessica Lauren Winkles. Dr. Maxwell Andrew Witt. Dr. Amanda Oyun Wang. Dr. Elizabeth Letterman Wang. Dr. Shirley Sichuan Yang. Dr. Ashling Shi Zhao. Dr. Emily Winxie Zhao. Dr. William Ju. Dr. Tatum Ivan Zorowski. Dean Rungi, I give you the class of 2020. Thank you, Dr. Mangroker. In our profession, it is the custom established more than 2,000 years ago that no one may be admitted to its honor who has not yet expressly taken upon him or herself its obligations. On behalf of our elders, I call upon you to take, as we have taken before you, the oath which bears the name of Hippocrates. Will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Medicine in the class of 2020 please rise? I would also like to invite all those physicians in the audience who wish at this time to renew the Hippocratic Oath to rise and also join the candidates in taking the oath. The language in which our predecessors first pronounced these words is no longer spoken. The very gods whom they called to witness have been discarded but still we find no nobler terms than the most ancient in which to hand down the traditions of our calling. Will you repeat after me? I do solemnly swear by that which I hold most sacred. I do solemnly swear by that which I hold most sacred. That I will be loyal to the profession of medicine and just and generous to its members. That I will be loyal to the profession of medicine and just and generous to its members. That I will share the knowledge and skills which I have received with my colleagues and with future generations of physicians. That I will share the knowledge and skills which I have received with my colleagues and with future generations of physicians. That I will lead my life and practice my art in uprightness and honor. That I will lead my life and practice my art in uprightness and honor. That into whatsoever house I shall enter it shall be for the good of the sick, to the utmost of my powers. Into whatsoever house I shall enter, it shall be for the good of the sick, to the utmost of my powers. I holding myself aloof from wrong, from corruption, from the tempting of others to vice. I holding myself aloof from wrong, from corruption, from the tempting of others to vice. That I will exercise my art solely for the good of my patients. And I will give no drug, perform no operation, for a criminal purpose, even if solicited, far less suggested. That I will exercise my art solely for the good of my patients. And will give no drug, perform no operations for a criminal purpose, even if solicited, far less suggested. That whatsoever I shall see or hear of the lives of patients which is not fitting to be spoken, I will keep inviolably secret. That whatsoever I shall see or hear of the lives of patients which is not fitting to be spoken, I will keep inviolably secret. These things I do promise, and in proportion as I am faithful to my oath, may happiness and good repute be ever mine, the opposite if I shall be forsworn. These things I do promise, and in proportion as I am faithful to this my oath, may happiness and good repute be ever mine, the opposite if I shall be forsworn. Once again, on behalf of the faculty of the University of Michigan Medical School, congratulations. 
to the class of 2020. As we conclude this celebration, we would like to extend our gratitude and well wishes to our entire Michigan family. Together, we will get through this. And remember, wherever you are, Go Blue!